I'm Dr. Julie Elner. You're watching Chapter 5 of my bariatric surgery video. We'll be picking up where we left off in Chapter 4. The complications that can occur with a gastric bypass, the first one listed is a stricture, and that's at that connection between the stomach and the small intestine where we're trying to heal internally. If your body just creates too much scar tissue where the food is passing from the small stomach into the small intestine, the food won't go through properly. If you get a stricture, it's not a big reoperation to fix it. It involves a 10-minute endoscopy procedure where we put you to sleep with an IV and put a camera down through the mouth and we glide it into the stomach. We can see the scar tissue. We stretch the scar tissue up back to the normal size and you go home. It's a 10-minute procedure. That's a fairly straightforward fix for a stricture after a gastric bypass. A stricture after a sleeve is a very different story and we are going to talk about that. But strictures typically only happen within the first three months after a gastric bypass and very few people actually get them except for smokers. You cannot smoke after any stomach surgery, but it's particularly dangerous to smoke after a gastric bypass surgery because it causes severe and sometimes unfixable strictures and ulcers in your new little stomach. A leak is what we're monitoring you for while you're in the hospital. A leak is basically where you get one little area of that connection between your stomach and your small intestine that doesn't heal up quite as fast as the rest of the connection. If you're going to have that after a gastric bypass, you typically have that within the first 48 hours, and that's why we're keeping you in the hospital for 48 hours monitoring your healing to make sure that you don't have a leak and that you're good and healed before you go home. You can see on the slide that as of the date of this taping, the national average for leaks is less than half of 1%. It's 0.4%. And typically, most leaks will heal up with antibiotics with just a little bit of extra care in the hospital. And most patients don't need another operation to heal a leak after a gastric bypass. That too is very different from a leak after a sleeve, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Bowel obstruction or an internal hernia, which is basically where you get a twist of the small intestine and the food that you're trying to eat won't go through properly, that can happen after a gastric bypass. If that does happen, it's typically a fairly straightforward operation to fix. People are in and out of the hospital typically within 24 hours, and it doesn't affect your long-term success. This is Angie. Angie is one of my patients who also came to me from Alaska. And Angie is also one of my patients who became a personal trainer after surgery. Some of the side effects of gastric bypass. It's important to know that you're going to absorb four times as much alcohol after a gastric bypass. So one glass of wine equals four glasses of wine after a gastric bypass. It doesn't mean that you can't ever drink, but it does mean that you're going to get drunk more quickly, and it does mean that you're going to have more profound effects on a smaller amount of alcohol. So do not drive after consuming even a small amount of alcohol. And your liver is also actually seeing four times as much alcohol from a given drink. So with a gastric bypass, you have to be very careful about how often you consume alcohol and make sure that you always have a driver for you no matter how little you might drink. People often ask about medications. What medicines can they not take after gastric bypass surgery? Really, after any stomach surgery, you should not take NSAIDs, which are aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen. Those are no-nos for anybody who's had any sort of stomach surgery, but especially the gastric bypass, because they will cause terrible, bleeding, painful ulcers that sometimes may never heal. And they can cause very serious complications, potentially even death from bleeding or perforation. So you want to never take aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen after a gastric bypass. But long-acting medicines don't really hurt you, but they might not absorb to 100% effectiveness. So ask the doctor to put you on a short-acting version of the same medication, and you should absorb it just fine. So let's compare the two operations we've talked about so far, the gastric bypass versus the band. The band is a little bit newer. 
It's considered to be safe. There are improvements that have been made over the years with both operations, but the major differences are the weight loss happens faster with the gastric bypass. Typically patients with the gastric bypass hit the mark within 10 to 12 months, and it might take a band patients two to three years in order to lose all the weight they're going to lose. The gastric banding provides portion control only, whereas the gastric bypass gives you portion control with that small stomach, but it also gives you chemical appetite suppression. So gastric banding is the least invasive surgery, but it also gives you the least help. Let's compare the band and the bypass in terms of just a few comorbidity resolutions. That's looking at how many patients have these problems completely go away after surgery. The dark purple bar is the band patients and the light purple bar represents the bypass patients. With diabetes, over 70% of band patients have the problem go completely away. But with a bypass, it's 90% and it happens within 48 hours like we talked about earlier. Same thing applies to the hypertension, the blood pressure. With the bypass patients, 90% of them leave the hospital, they're off of all their blood pressure medicines, and over 60% of band patients ultimately have their blood pressure go back to normal, but it could take a year or two to accomplish that. With the gastroesophageal reflux disease, that's the heartburn, 98% of bypass patients never have acid reflux again. As soon as that surgery is done, the, the acid that's made in the lower part of the stomach has no connection to the upper part of the stomach and the esophagus anymore. So 98% of people never have acid reflux again, and over 70% of patients with the band report that their acid reflux goes away after a year or two of weight loss. So let's switch gears into the sleeve now. The sleeve is the newest operation. In some ways, it's the easiest operation to understand because basically what we're doing is we're removing that little half moon segment of stomach. That segment of stomach that you see off to the right of the picture is completely cut off and discarded. That's why this is the only irreversible surgery because we're actually physically removing part of your digestive tract. So with a sleeve, 80 to 90% of the stomach is removed and you're left with a stomach that's kind of the shape of a tube or a sleeve, and that's why it's called a sleeve. It decreases the storage capacity, so it helps people with portion control, but it also provides a boost to metabolism and a decrease in the appetite hunger hormone ghrelin. The sleeve is the only surgery that is irreversible, as I mentioned. It's a good option if you've had lots of prior surgery on your intestines and maybe you have scar tissue on your small intestines and you can't use your small intestine to do a gastric bypass. Well, a sleeve may be a very good option because we don't use the small intestine when we do a sleeve operation. There's no foreign body as there is with a gastric band, and the risk of vitamin deficiency is thought to be low, although you do have to know that you have to take vitamins after all of these surgeries for the rest of your life. The weight loss with a sleeve statistically is less than a gastric bypass, but again, it's highly dependent on patient and surgeon commitment to aftercare. Your surgery, no matter what you choose, is just getting a tool installed, and it's up to you to use that tool properly, and it's up to me as the surgeon to teach you how to do that. With the sleeve, complications oftentimes occur in the form of heartburn. Heartburn, which is GERD, is a predominant complication. If it gets very severe, your surgery may have to be switched to a gastric bypass, which is a much higher risk surgery to switch from a sleeve to a bypass, and you don't want to go down that road unless you really have a problem that you can't manage otherwise. But what this means for people who have acid reflux to begin with, if you have significant acid reflux to start with, don't have a sleeve. Have a gastric bypass instead if your acid reflux is really a problem for you. The lower part of the stomach with a sleeve is actually naturally more stretchy than the upper part of the stomach. If you tend to overfill that sleeve stomach, there is a possibility that you could overstretch your stomach, which could lead to weight gain. 
Now we're working on this. We've actually decreased the number of people that get restretch of their stomach by changing things the way we do in the operating room. So that statistic is actually improving over time. Anytime you have a staple line in your stomach or your intestines for any reason, no matter what the surgery, you could have a leak, which is where you're not healing properly. If you get a leak from your staple line after a sleeve, it's a much more difficult problem to solve than it is with a gastric bypass. It may take months to heal or another major reoperation or multiple other procedures to try to get that leak to seal up and to heal. The other thing that's very different between a sleeve and a gastric bypass is that while your risk of having a leak with a gastric bypass is typically within the first 48 hours, with a sleeve, you do carry that risk for the rest of your life, although the risk is still very low. It's still less than half a percent of people get a leak after a sleeve gastrectomy. So the risk is extremely low, but it never quite leaves you. When you have a sleeve, you can get a twist of the stomach or herniation of the stomach up into the chest. Those are, are rare complications, but they can happen. If that happens, you'll need another operation to fix that.